All right, and welcome to 5 Minute Fridays, everyone. As you saw in the video today, today we're actually gonna be discussing about time lapses, specifically how to capture nightscape time lapses. So most modern cameras that we have today actually have a built-in time lapse feature to capture these. But since it is Milky Way season, I actually thought I'd make a video about how to capture these specifically for astrophotography or kind of a nightscape video. So let's kind of go over how you want to actually capture and set up to actually do sort of or long exposure um, time lapses. So first things first is you need to work on your composition. So focus on what you're actually going to be shooting during the day. So scope out areas where you want to see, use uh, you know the lens that you're actually going to be capturing in, the light to actually be using for composition. So in most cases, when you're actually gonna be capturing these time lapses, you want, want you want a wide angle lens. So in most cases, a wide lens, such as a 24 or a 14 to 24 will be enough. The other choice too is to actually go with a prime. And the reason you may wanna actually go with a wide angle prime, such as a 35, a 20, or a 24, is mostly you're gonna actually gonna be capturing better light and you're gonna have better performance overall. In my case, I'm actually using a 24, which is actually here on the camera, and I'm actually gonna be using it with my Nikon camera. So let's actually kinda of go over the settings on how I set up. So let's pretend we're actually gonna be capturing a nightscape with our com composition, such as the one, the, the intro we saw here. So once you have your composition during the day, what you wanna do is figure out your settings for night. So in most cases, what you wanna do is shoot as wide as you can. So if you're using a prime lens, such as a 24 1.8 like I am, you'll actually be wanting to go as wide as you can. The other thing you'll want to do is actually focus on infinity. The reason you'll want to focus on infinity is because that'll actually allow you to get as sharp as possible for the stars to be as sharp as possible. All right, so now that we have two settings, we have good composition, we got your um, stars as sharp as possible. The next setting you'll actually want to do is actually bump up your ISO a bit. So depending on the camera you have, you may have to investigate where the best optimal ISO is. In my case, because I'm using a Nikon ZF and Z6 Mark II, the best setting is usually around 1600 ISO to 64 ISO. In my case, I shot about at 32 ISO. The next thing you'll want to do is actually get a couple practice shots before you even set up the time lapse. So to get the good photo of the night sky, you want to follow the 500 rule. So what is the 500 rule? Well, the 500 rule is basically you t you divide the focal length of your lens by whatever 500 should be. And that'll actually give you the exposure time for your shutter speed to actually be. So in my case, since I'm using a 24 and you divide that by um, 500, you get about 20 seconds. So you don't wanna necessarily go longer than 20 seconds because you'll actually notice star trails and we wanna avoid that. So in my case, when I'm using my 24 uh, millimeter lens, I'll go about 20 seconds at, at, at widest aperture of f1.8, and then ISO about 1600 to 3200 to 6400. And you'll get a couple of practice shots to see what is the optimal performance for your camera. Once you have that in, you'll actually be wanting to go into time-lapse mode. Well, since I mostly use Nikon, I'll kind of show you how to do that in a moment. So we're here with my Nikon. What you wanna do is actually go here into the menu and it's gonna be in the second one, the camera one. And you wanna go all the way down until you see something called time-lapse. So what I'm gonna quickly do is show you the settings I'm actually using real quick. So I'm gonna set my, expo my time to about 20 seconds. So let's go 20 seconds. Let's go to ISO. Let's start off with 3200. And what you'll also want to do is actually, now from here, from these settings, you actually want to go to the menu again and then go to time lapse mode. Go to on. And depending on the intervals, the intervals is essentially how long in between shots of your current settings you'll want. So in my case, I want about five seconds because that's gonna give you enough information to see a star kind of moving over time. 
And then for your shooting time, it goes by hour, then minutes. So let's actually go to, in my case, I want to get a good amount of time. So let's do five hours. Yep, there we go. And then once you hit OK, the time lapse will actually happen. So a couple other things you also want is to make sure that you have full battery and you have a really sturdy tripod. So when you actually set down your photo, your tripod and your camera, it's actually not going to be moving around. So I just definitely suggest to avoid windy areas or let's say uh, areas where people might hit or stumble upon your camera. So in my case, I usually just set it close to my car or behind some barrier. And in the shot that you saw earlier today, I actually set it behind some bushes even though it was a bit of a windy night, the tripod didn't move too much. So after about five hours with these settings that I'm showing you here, I actually got this time lapse. So hope you guys like that. That's been Five Minute Fridays. And since Milky Way is upon us, I hope you guys really like this. And yeah, let me know. Um, let me know what other information you guys would like to hear about this sort of time lapse. And since Milky Way is upon us, I'm gonna be doing a lot of Milky Way shots and preparing for all those great photos we can actually get. All right, well, until next time. This has been Five Minute Friday, guys, and I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.